Can't beat it. Can't beat it. Welcome back to the sawmill guys. It's Friday. We got a black walnut log in there waiting on us. Probably do some five quarter boards on it. I need to do some adjustments to the sawmill before we even get started. And before the video's over with, we'll walk over here to the garden and I'll show you guys what's been going on with it. Got a lot of questions about that. I need to do more gardening videos here, I believe. Well, we got some bell peppers to pick and a whole lot of tomatoes, guys. So stick with us here. We're gonna have a good day here at the mill. We got walnut to saw, we can't beat that. So on the last video, guys, I don't know if y'all saw this or not, I'll try to put the footage up here so you know what I'm talking about. The blade guide arm started getting pulled into the cut and it was stopping the mill. Well, what I mean by that, the blade guide roller over here on this side of the saw mill was coming in and when I was doing my cut, the force of that blade was pulling the blade guide arm into the log and causing it to stop. I was having to retract the arm constantly. And it's gotten worse in the past probably week or two. I noticed it for the past month. It just started moving over just a little bit. But the last time we did a video, which was uh, first of this week, I guess, on that poplar, it was drawing in there so much, it was hitting the log and stopping the sawmill. And we gotta fix that, guys. Keep me having that going on here. So right here is the blade guide arm I'm talking about. A very important feature on this sawmill. On the LT35, it was manual. On this one, I push a button. It's really nice. I really like it. This is the small electric motor right here. It's got a little crankshaft in here and a chain drive that moves this in and out. Now the blade guide arm pretty much just rides on four of these rollers. There's two on the bottom, two on the top. So what I think has happened here is due to blade wear and this thing just being a year old and kind of breaking it in. These right here have gotten a little loose on me. This one right here has a little bit of play in it. When I move the blade guide arm back and forth, you can kind of see it moving just a little bit right there. So this one right here is loose. It also operates on a cam, which means, you know, it kind of goes back and forth. It doesn't really go in and out. Now there's a lot up behind it. There's another nut in here where the blade actually is, and it's kind of hard to get to. I had to buy a specialty wrench for this. That's a Tecton inch and an eighth. I hope I'm saying that name right. And I think it's a 30 and a 60 degree angle on the ends. And uh, these are made up in Michigan. They're pretty expensive. I think this was about $40. The snap-on version was 110. Just ridiculous prices for wrenches in my opinion, but you gotta have it because there was no way of reaching this area without that little curve. Let me bring you over here and show you. As you can see, come right in there with it. And there's no way to get in there without an angled wrench. And there's four of those. There's a second one, the third one, and the fourth one. They're pretty hard to get to, but if you have this wrench, it makes it pretty easy, actually. This this job would be impossible without this wrench, I'm pretty sure. You'd have to take off this wheel to really access them if you didn't have that. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen it up and cam this over toward the camera just a little bit, and then tighten it down with the lock nut on the back, and that should get it going. And for you guys out there running these blade guide arms that are automated like this, I'll leave a link down below to their website where you can buy them from. This isn't sponsored by them or nothing like that. I paid full price. But you'll need an inch and an eighth on that side and a 15 sixteenths on this nut right here. And just to show it, here's the other one, the 15 sixteenths that goes on the front. This one's a little bit cheaper. I think it was about $25 maybe or something like that. Expensive tools, but you know, when you need these tools, you really need them. So, you know, buy once, cry once is what the essential craftsman says all the time, and he's exactly right. All right, guys, right here. Woodmiser 
blade guide alignment tool. Got to have one of these. They come with every sawmill. So the first thing you want to do is come in here and clip this thing on. It's got a little clip right there. It goes over here on the drive side of the mill. Make sure your blade is tensioned up also. If it's not tensioned up, you're going to get false readings right here. And it's going to be kind of difficult with this camera going, all this stuff in here to show you guys what's going on. But I'll do my best. All right now, guys, this is old hat for you people with sawmills, but a lot of the subscribers have asked for this. After you put the blade guide alignment tool on right here, and sorry about the camera angle, this is about the best I could do here. I had to move this uh, pullback arm out of the way. You measure down to whatever you want to. In this case, we did 18 inches. So right there, we're at 18 inches from the bed up to the top of this uh, blade guide alignment tool. And you can measure to the bottom if you want to, it really doesn't matter. Just measure from the same place on both sides. And what you do next is you move this over a little bit more than halfway across the uh, the blade right here. I go about three fourths of the way over to an open throat setting, which is 34 inches. Uh, 34 inches being the total throat, you know, width right here. So I go over probably 24 inches, maybe something like that. And then you want to come over here and check that measurement. You want it to be a 16th of an inch higher. And I'll explain that here in just a second when I'm not trying to look through the cut throat of this sawmill and bend over in this awkward position. So let's move this thing over and make sure the alignment's good. And then I'll explain why we're 16th of an inch higher on the idle side. I tell you what, my buddy Jason Knight has a camera crew. And in situations like this, I can see why that would be helpful. So I'll put it about right there and we'll measure that. You know, the cut throat is 34 inches on my mill. So it's, that's what I was thinking. We're about 24 inches over right here on this blade. And let's take another measurement and we should be at 18 inches and a 16th right here unless by tightening down that roller it threw it off. Let me see what we got. And right on the money. That's what we want right there. 16th of an inch. All right, friends, we'll see how that works. Pay attention on this first cut on the walnut here. And hopefully that will be enough torque on that roller to keep that blade guide arm from coming into the timber. We'll see what happens. So we got our alignment done. And the reason we do a 16th of an inch on the idle side is because of the centrifugal force with this cantilever head on the sawmill. When it throttles down and you engage the blade, it pulls that head down a 16th of an inch and that makes the blade level. That's why you want the blade a 16th of an inch higher on the idle side. You know, you got all that force coming with this head because it's only got one uh, post on it. You know, it's not got four posts like some sawmills. There's a single post on this side of the sawmill. And when it brings that force in and pulls the blade toward this post, it's, you know, it tilts the head just a little and that 16th of an inch makes up that difference. And one last thing here, guys, this is a sponsored video. Walls Outdoor Goods have sponsored me here. We're gonna do about a year long deal with those guys. And about once a month, they'll do a sponsored video with us. And they make some really good work clothes. They sell them at Tractor Supply. They sell them at their website online. I'll leave a link down below to that. And they sent me this shirt. It's got a nice little handy pocket in it and these pants I'm wearing. Something I really liked about these pants, guys, and I'm not just saying this because they sponsor the video, is this pocket right here on the thigh. It zips open and it's the perfect size for a smartphone. You know, you put your iPhone in there, you're sawing, you ain't gotta worry about putting on vibrate, somebody calls you, you know what's going on. For you guys out there running sawmills, you will really uh, share my frustrations right there at the end of the day when you have your phone and it's just covered in sawdust. It gets under your otter box, gets in your speaker, it just makes a mess right there. It could ruin your phone pretty fast, so. For that reason alone, I love these pants because of that cell phone pocket. And they're really comfortable as well, I really like them. And uh, the second plug, my buddy Killinger, I wanna say thanks for the suspenders guy. There's a link down below to his channel as well. He does chainsaws and tractors and leather work. He sent me these suspenders about two, three months ago, I guess about the time summer started really getting started here in Tennessee. So a big thank you to Walls Outdoor Goods. There's a link down below to check those guys out. We got black walnut on the sawmill, got thunderstorms that are moving in. 
we're probably going to hurry through this one. I'm not sure how much we'll get done after this one's over with because I've got to get in that garden and pick some of those tomatoes and peppers tonight. Those things are ready to go. So we're doing five quarter. I'm probably just going to hook two cameras up on both sides, do some different angles. And this log right here is nothing fancy. I dug it out of a pile last week when I was moving stuff around. It's been on the ground for probably two years. And I'm getting long winded here, but I'm trying to tell you guys everything I know about it. And it's pretty nasty. The bark is falling off of it. And I expect some decently solid boards with a little bit of sapwood and probably some bud damage. So uh, that's on the menu for today. So let's get to sawing guys and get going before this storm moves in. Thanks to everybody on Patreon for supporting the channel and thanks for everybody that watches this channel. And if you're not subscribed to it yet, hit that button below, hit the like button. And uh, that's about all I got to say about that, I guess. So uh, let's get sawing.
All right now guys, now bear in mind, we've probably picked at least 500 tomatoes this year and almost canned 80 quarts of tomato juice. So this right here is not out of the ordinary to come up here and pull this many tomatoes at one time. These right here are celebrities, they're good for canning. And these are San Marinos. I'm probably saying that wrong. They're good for salsa and stuff like that. But we are out of room here in this milk crate. I'm going to, have to grab one more because we got about this much tomatoes up here left to pick. Maybe more than that. And over here in the yellow one, got some really nice green peppers. Love these things right here. We freeze these as stuffed peppers and we also cut them up and freeze them that way as well. And this right here is probably some of the biggest ones that we've had all year. Look at the size of that thing. Got Blue up here with us this evening. This is Blue Boy right here. Come to die, you know. 